time. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. It's our first service for uh, 2023, amen? amen? I know we're kind of here on uh, uh, the night of 31st and the morning of the first, but uh, it's our first uh, service. Uh, I feel like we ought to give the Lord a uh, standing ovation, amen? Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And if you're able to clap, that's because God got you, got you through 2022. Amen. Amen. Uh, a lot not here. Yeah, a lot of people didn't make it. Amen. Yeah. A lot of people gathered on the 31st and didn't make it to the first. Amen. Yeah. But God allowed us to, to make it, and He allowed us to be here this morning. And now we don't take that for granted. Amen. Yeah. Uh, I want to welcome our visitors, uh, Miss Yvette. Uh, <laughs> and the Green family, want to welcome them all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we had a meeting a couple of Wednesdays ago and I, I had the leaders in here and we talked about uh, kind of like the vision and the uh, uh, direction that we'll be going in this year. Uh, our theme for this year is promotion. This is our year of promotion. We talked about that. And the first thing we want to elevate, because uh, promotion means go to the next level, right, uh, is our music ministry. Amen. We want to give uh, Jason some, some help over <laughs> Keyboard coming next week, and we got a, a lead singer coming next week. Amen? Okay. So we're gonna take our praise and worship uh, up a notch. I mean, you've been doing the thing, and we appreciate you, man. Amen. We appreciate amen. you because you've been anywhere this morning, amen? amen. But you're in the house of the Lord, young man in the house of the Lord, as opposed to being anywhere else, amen. So we we uh, we want to appreciate you, amen. Thank you. And we can appreciate you. All right, so let's get on into the word for today. <laughs> Y'all drop anything. <laughs> I love it. All right, so we're going to look at uh, the book of Daniel. Amen. We're going to look at uh, the, the promotion um, process, if you will. We're going to look at how, how God, process, uh, how God uh, promotes. All right. And we're going to also look at how the, uh, the enemy promotes. Amen. Because God wants to promote you. Amen. God wants to favor you. God wants to, uh, to bless you. Right? He wants to bless us, right? Because we his people. I want to bless my kids. Amen. You want to bless your kids. God wants to bless his kids. Amen. Amen. But we have to allow him to bless him. Amen. Because sometimes we'll get in our own way. Amen. Sometimes we'll get in God's way and we'll stop our own blessing. Amen. Uh, Daniel 1, which is where uh, we get our fast from. Daniel 1. I want to read uh, verses 1 through 7. We're going to um, look at the promotion process, amen? Daniel 1 and 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, into Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into the hand, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinea, which is Babylon, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Azapim, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding science and as such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank. So nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah of uh, Shadrach, and of Mishael, Meshach, and of Azariah of uh, Abinadab. Pray with me if you would. 
Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you again for allowing us to make it to 2023. We thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you for everything that we experienced, everything that we witnessed, everything that you allowed us to come through in 2022. And we thank you, Lord God, for uh, our year of service. We thank you for allowing us to serve in our homes, at our church, in our community, and even allowing us to go to Brazil and serve abroad. We thank you for your hand of provision. We thank you, Lord God, for your hand of protection. And we thank you, Lord God, that you have plans for us this year, Lord God. And so allow us, Lord God, to um, be edified, built up, strengthened, and, ex and established in the plans that you have for us, Lord God. Allow us, Lord God, to be the men and women that you called us to be. And allow us, Lord God, to receive whatever it is that you have for us today. Allow us to decrease and you increase. Allow us, Lord God, to hear you and experience you. Allow us, Lord God, to be aware of your presence. And because we're in your presence, Lord God, there's healing, there's deliverance, there's whatever we stand in need of, Lord God. So I pray that nobody has to leave. Hallelujah, Lord God, without whatever it is that they stand in need of. I pray, Lord God, that we all receive whatever it is that we, that we need. I pray, Lord God, that we be good ground. I pray, Lord God, that we be hearers and doers of your word. And I pray, Lord God, that we continue to give you the honor and the glory and the praise. Continue to use us and continue to have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to give the Lord a hand of praise in Jesus. So if you look at our, our, our opening text, uh, you see a lot of a lot of names. You see like the name Judah, which means praise. You see the name Babylon, which means confusion. You see the name Jerusalem, which means teaching uh, of peace. You see the name Nebuchadnezzar, which means may Nebo protect the crown. Amen. So you see a lot of names in, uh, in our opening text. Amen. And names are important because they speak to our character. Amen. Names are important. Uh, they carry a lot of weight, and especially uh, during this time in, in history. Amen. The children of Israel would give their, their, their kids names based on uh, the character that they had or the character that they wanted them to have. Amen. And so uh, names are important. What I want to look at today is I want to look at how Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the diabolical, the evil genius that he was, I want, to, I, want to, I want you to see how he indoctrinated. I want you to see how he uh, dealt with the, uh, the prisoners of war. I want you to see how he dealt with uh, the captives. Amen. Because as you know, uh, in our studies on Wednesday night as we go through the Bible, that the children of Israel, uh, God brought them into the promised land, but that was a contingency. Amen. If they obeyed him, if they followed him, if they stayed with my idols, uh, then, then he would protect them. Amen. Yep. Deuteronomy 28 talks about all the blessings that he was going to pour up. Yeah, the blessings going to chase him down and going to take him over. Uh, but if they disobeyed him, amen, if they followed out the idols and those types of things, then that was going to be a curse. Amen. They were going to be in, into captivity. And God explained all that to them, right? Yeah. Uh, and we know that the northern kingdom fell first because all they had up there were evil kings, right? And we know that Judah, the, the, the southern kingdom, that they fell uh, after the, the northern kingdom fell. Amen? Even, even seeing the northern kingdom fall, and even uh, with prophets coming to them telling them that, that God was going to uh, judge them based on their activities. Amen? Amen? And all they had to do was repent. All they had to do was uh, trust God. All they had to do was... Uh, put their idols down, amen? But uh, instead, they, 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 uh, they chase out of the idols, amen? They're, they're, they're rebellious people, amen? Uh, they're disobedient people, and God had to judge them. And he uses Babylon, he uses Nebuchadnezzar as the instrument to which he uh, brings them into judgment, amen? God wants to use us to, to bless, Amen? He wants to use us as vessels, uh, conduits, to which he could pour a blessing through to get to uh, his children, right? Amen? We, if we be good stewards of the blessings and uh, all the uh, things that God allows us to uh, have and possess, if we be good stewards of those things, then we're able to bless others that are around us. Amen? And as God promotes or elevates us, then we're able to promote and elevate others. We're able to edify others. We're able to uh, build up, we're able to strengthen, we're able to establish, establish others. Amen? Amen. If we be obedient with the stuff that, that God allows us to steward, because I don't own nothing. <laughs> Amen? I don't own nothing. It's all God's stuff. And so if God tells me to do something with your stuff, Amen? I'm going to be obedient and I'm going to do it with your stuff. Amen? Amen. Uh, when you look at our opening text, you see that um, Nebuchadnezzar goes into Judah. And he uh, captures it, right? Mm -hmm. if, if, you, if you look further into the history of it, you know that he besieged the city, right? 
Uh, he had some issues at, back at home. He had to go back and deal with his dad was dying. And to ensure that he uh, uh, had his place as king, he had to go back. So he takes some of the stuff from the temple, and he takes the choice of the people, the best of the best, and he takes them back with him, right? And so his plan is that he's going to make them Babylonian. Amen? He's going to make them uh, a part of that kingdom. He's going to uh, take their brain out, so to speak, and he's going to put that Babylonian brain in there. Amen? Kind of like, kind of like the Marines, not, not the, the army or the navy, we don't do that. Uh, but the Marines, that's kind of what they do, right? You don't, you don't serve in the Marines, you become a Marine. Amen? Simplify. Uh, do or die. You, you, don't become, uh, you don't become a sailor, you just serve in the Navy. Amen? Uh, you don't become a, a soldier, you just serve in the Army. But Marines become Marines, and they indoctrinate them. Just like a gang would indoctrinate. Amen? Just like a gang would indoctrinate. But that's what uh, Nebuchadnezzar does. He does four things. And this is what the enemy doing today with us. Amen? The enemy, we learned Wednesday night when we had Bible study, Ecclesiastes 1 and 2, that there's nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. Amen? Everything that's been done is being done. There's nothing new. Right? So the enemy used the same tricks uh, now that he used then. Amen? It's nothing new under the sun. Nebuchadnezzar does at least four things. I want to point out four things that Nebuchadnezzar does in our text right here. He, he isolates he indoctrinates, he introduces, and he identifies. He does those four things. And it's the same thing that the enemy is doing today. Amen? Uh, if you look at verse 3, we see that he isolates the believers. He takes the, the people of God and, and he brings them uh, out. He, he gets a certain amount of them he brings them into the palace. Amen? He takes them out. He, he, uh, uh, he doesn't allow them to be with the rest of the people of God. He takes them out and isolates them. That's what God wants. For, that's what the enemy wants for us. Amen. He wants to isolate us. He wants us to, to have fault with the, the man of God. He wants us to have fault with the church. He wants us to have a reason not to go to church. Yep. Amen. Uh, Hebrews uh, 10 and 25 says this, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. It's important that we get together. I know COVID kind of changed everything, right? Mm -hmm. I remember uh, before COVID how uh, it was people all over the place. <laughs> Amen. COVID hit. We had to stop. At some point, we had to stop coming in here. Amen. Uh, then we started uh, having church in the parking lot, right? You remember you was in your cars and it was safe. Uh, and we did that for a little while. Then we opened the doors back up. <laughs> and it has never been the same. And I promise you, it's like that at most churches. I know at least two churches that had to shut down. Amen. Because of the lack of uh, membership. Right? And you know, if we don't come, our, our tithes and our offerings don't come. Some of us don't even tithe and offer when we come. But you know, if we ain't in the building, we, our tithes and offerings ain't going to make it to the building. Amen? Amen? And so a lot of churches had to shut down. Amen? But God allowed us to stay open. Amen? So, so I'm, I'm saying this to us all. The enemy wants to isolate us. He wants to get us off by ourselves so he can talk to us and tell us how uh, we don't need to be in the church. Amen. We don't need we don't need that foolishness. Amen. I can read my Bible right here. I don't have to go out there and hang out with them people. I don't have to wake up early on a Sunday morning. I got to wake up early tomorrow and go to work. Amen. This is my day of rest. I should be resting. Amen. So what he wants to do is he wants to isolate us. But we know that one can chase a, a thousand, but two can put any two thousand to flight. Amen. And so when we come together, that's power. Amen. And, and unity, that's power in the numbers, amen? We know that uh, two two are, are not easily uh, taken, amen? One fall down, you got, got, you got your boy there to pull you back up, and the three-fold cord is not easily broken. The, so the more of us together uh, walking in the same direction, because how can two walk together except every, and all, we get together and we and we unified and we got one mind, we single, got a single mind, we can accomplish a lot of things. That's how the, type, the Tower of Babel was built, amen? Yes, God said, I got to go down here and confuse these people. Because there's nothing that's going to be withheld from them. So anytime we come together to do good or bad, and we got the same mind, we're going to be successful. Amen. Amen? But the enemy don't want that. He wants you all by yourself. Amen? He wants to isolate. So that's the first thing he does. He isolates. Amen? Uh, the second thing he does is he indoctrinates. Right? 
And if you, if you look at our text, you see that he's going to roll them into the University of Babylon. Amen? So to speak. And they got three year, three year of education or indoctrination, uh, brainwashing, to conform them to the Babylonian mindset. Amen? But we know, right, that um, Romans 12, 1 and 2 says this, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we're not to conform to the world. Amen? I, I don't go to my job and, 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 and be like everybody else. Amen? I'm supposed to stick out. I'm supposed to be that odd ball. I'm supposed to be uh, the person that don't necessarily uh, go to everything. Yeah. Amen? And even if I do, like I do a lot of marriages, but we'll, 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 we'll do the, we'll, I'll, I'll do my part, and then we'll leave. Mm -hmm. Right? Because cause I, I, I do a lot of marriages for the people I work with. And so we'll do, I'll do my part in the pulpit, and then we'll leave most of the time. Because now, now they're going to get turned up. Yeah. Right? Now they got a party, they got to celebrate, you know, they popping this and they drinking that. And, and, and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to conform to this world. Amen? Amen? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, we are peculiar people, a royal priesthood. We're not of this world. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. Amen? We're passing through this world. Amen? So, so the second thing that he does is he tries to indoctrinate them. Amen? But we got to be conformed, not conformed to this world. Right? We've got to renew our minds. We've got to renew our minds. Amen? I think uh, Sister Linda preached a great sermon on that uh, a few weeks ago. Amen? We've got to renew our minds. How, how do we renew our minds? We we gotta we gotta renew it with this word, amen. We gotta renew. We gotta get in this word. That's why I like our Wednesday nights. How we just go through uh, straight through the Bible. We started in Genesis, we're in Ecclesiastes now, and, and and it's hard, it's hard to to, to, to miss over or to, to skip over something or a subject or a uh, text when you're going straight through. So you're dealing with homosexuality, amen. You're dealing with racism. You're dealing with everything because you're going straight through. You're not getting to pick and choose your topics, amen, based on uh, what's politically correct and what's politically incorrect. You just want straight through the Bible. Amen. amen. This is just, thus said the Lord. And so don't blame the pastor if we're talking about homosexuality. That's, it's, it's, it's in there. Amen. amen. It's in there. Uh, but, but that's what he wants to do. He wants to indoctrinate them. And that's what the world wants to do with us. They want us to think like them. They want us to dress like them. They want us to drink like them. They want us to eat like them. Amen. And when you don't, it's obvious. But it should be. It should be obvious. Amen? It should be obvious. Present your body to live and sacrifice holy. And except holy means different. Amen? If, if, if I go to your job, if they accuse you of being a Christian at your job, would it be enough evidence to convict you? Would it be enough evidence to convict you? What's the evidence? How do you know this guy's a Christian? Amen? Um, so they want to isolate, they want to indoctrinate. The next thing he does is he introduces. Uh, when, when, a gang, uh, when a gang wants you in, right, they watch you, right, they, they make sure you're a good fit, right? right? And then they, they introduce you to that gang lifestyle, right? You want to drive nice cars, right? You want a nice house. You want nice clothes. You want to dress like me, right? right? So let me introduce you to this style of life. That's what Nebuchadnezzar does. He brings them into the palace, and they eating like kings. They drinking his wine. Amen. Amen. The, isn't that odd? Yeah. These are prisoners of war, right? These are captives, slaves, if you will. And they eating what the kings eat. They drinking what the kings drinking for three years. After three years of eating and drinking like the king, don't you think I'm gonna get used to that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't go back now. I'm doing whatever I need to do to stay at that table. Amen? Amen? And, that, and that's, what, that's what gangs do. That's what the Marines do. That's what uh, any organization that's trying to um, <coughs> indoctrinate, influence, change your mindset. That's, that's what they do. That's what cults do. You can't go back out there. Those people are crazy. <laughs> they think we're crazy, but they're crazy. You can't go back out there. You've been exposed to all this luxurious living. You've been uh, put at ease. They ain't doing nothing. They're just getting groomed. They're getting poured into. Amen? 
That's what the world wants for us. That's what the enemy wants for us. If he can get us indoctrinated, introduced to, and isolated, we like that, that sheep that strays away. That's the one that the tiger or the lion is going to get, right? Yep. That's the antelope that's going to get taken, right? Mm -hmm. not, not the one that's in the pack. He ain't messing with the pack. Because he's getting hoofs all up in his, right? Amen. Right? We're trampling him. Uh, so he's getting that stray. Amen? Or, or if there's no strays, if they're all together, I'm coming to the back. Yeah. And I'm getting the, the slow one, amen? Mm -hmm. The one that's kind of falling behind, amen? That's what I'm getting. And that's what the enemy does with us. So he wants to uh, isolate, he wants to indoctrinate, he wants to introduce us to that luxurious lifestyle so that we don't want to go back. We don't want to give it up, and we're going to do whatever we need to do to stay there, amen? amen. The last thing he does about <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar is he changes their name, amen? And I like the way he does it because it's so obvious. <laughs> and the enemy, don't, the enemy ain't got to hide the stuff these days. They call it what it is, right? If you're searching for uh, a porn site, you can you can just go right in there and go on. You got it ain't no uh, secret code or nothing. You got to type in, amen. They don't even hide that stuff, and they call it they call it like devils, whatever, or uh, uh, fallen angel this. They call it what it is, right? And we don't even catch it, right? It's a trap, and we don't even we we just go right in. Oh, devil's lounge. Let me go in and check this out. This is like it might be interesting. Oh, Satan's place. Let me let me hang out in here for a little bit. Right? They, they just call it what it is. They don't even have to hide it or conceal it or be secretive about it. They just call it what it is. And we just go right in. We open the door. We go in and we have a seat. And then we wonder why uh, our finances ain't right. We wonder why our health is messing up. We wonder why our kids are uh, acting up. Amen? But but we open that door and we let in the enemy. We, we give place to the enemy. Amen? Uh, so, so he changes their name. Daniel's name in the Hebrew means, God is my judge. But they changed his name to Bel Telshazzar, which means Bel's, Bel's prince, Bel's prince. So they take the, the name of God that's on him, amen, and they put their God name on him. All right? So every time we call him now, we're calling, we're saying Bel's prince, as opposed to saying God is my judge. Figure it. Think, think about it. If Nebuchadnezzar has him in his court, and every time he has to call Daniel to come do something, he says, God is my judge. Go find God is my judge. Get him up here. We, we need him to uh, interpret this dream. Go get God is my judge. I need him to come clean this toilet. Go get God. So every time he calls Daniel, then he's reminding Daniel who Daniel is mm -hmm. and who Daniel's God is. Amen. Um, Hananiah, one of the Hebrew boys, right? His name means God has favored. Uh, they changed his name to uh, Shadrach, which means illuminated by sun god, which is another uh, Babylonian god, right? So uh, imagine them calling them saying, uh, God is favored. Can we get God is favored up here? This is Mike on. God in favor. Mm -hmm. Got him on the sound. Okay, God in favor. Or oh, as opposed to saying, illuminated by the sun god. So every time they call him the Babylonian name, they're glorifying their god. Mm -hmm. But if they were to call him his name, then they'd be glorifying his god. And God forbid they glorify your God. Amen. Uh, Mishael name means, in the Hebrew, it means what is, who is what to God. It means who is what to God. Who is what to God. In other words, who, who, can, who can compare to God? Who is what to God? Mm. Amen. Nobody compares to God. You ain't nothing compared to God. Amen. That's what his Hebrew name means. They changed his name to Meshach, which means who is like Shaq which is another Babylonian god. It's kind of like the Aphrodite uh, Greek god or Venus Roman god, amen? It's that sex god, amen? Uh, that to to, to uh, worship this god, they, they have the uh, temple prostitutes, they have the orgies, that's how they worship that god, amen? And so, uh, instead of saying who is what to God when they call him, and when they say his name, they're saying who is like Shaq. So they take your god out of it, and they give you their God. Amen? That's what the world wants to do. That's what Satan wants to do with us. Amen? Azariah, his name means Jehovah has helped. They changed his name to Abinadab, which means servant of Nebo. Uh, Nebo was a major god in Assyria slash Babylon, uh, Pantheon. He was the patron of the art of writing and a god of presentation. So every time they call him in the Babylonian name, they're glorifying 
legal, as opposed to glorifying our God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Diabolical, right? You're an evil genius. And it's subtle. But it's obvious at the same time. That's the world we're in right now. It's subtle, but it's obvious. Amen? You ain't even got to have a real spiritual eye <laughs> to see it. You ain't even got to have a real spiritual ear to hear it. It's blatant now. Right? Your coworkers are talking, they're watching stuff. Uh, it's on the news. It's, you can't get away from it. Right? Your kids are being inundated with it. It's all over the place. The name, the final thing he does is change their name. Crazy, right? But we got to know who we are. Who does God call us? Mm. Right? God says, I am saved. That's what God calls me. He calls me saved. First Timothy 1 and 9 says this. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. God calls me completely, says I am complete. Colossians 2 and 10 says this. And you are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. God calls me chosen. First Thessalonians 1 and 4 says, we know, dear brothers and sisters, that God loves you and has chosen you to be his own people. God calls me forgiven. First John 2 and 12 says, I write to you, little brothers, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I'm a new creation. Second Corinthians 5 and 17 says, Therefore, if, Christ, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I'm a child of God. First John 3 and 1 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. We have to know who we are. Amen? Amen. The Bible says we're redeemed, Ephesians 1 and 7. The Bible says we're the light of the world, Matthew 5, 14. The Bible says I'm justified, Romans 5 and 1. The Bible says I'm free from sin, Romans 6 and 22. The Bible says I'm more than a conqueror, Romans 8 and 37. God says I'm God's temple, 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. God says I'm one in Christ, 1 Corinthians 6 and 17. God says, he calls me saved, he calls me called, 1 Corinthians 7 and 17. God calls me created for his works, Ephesians 2 and 10. God calls me safe in Christ, Colossians 3 and 3. God calls me victorious, 1 Corinthians 15, 57. God says, I'm not condemned, Romans 8 and 1. God says, I'm guarded for his peace, Philippians 4 and 7. God says, I'm no longer a slave. Galatians 4 and 7. God says I'm accepted. Romans 5, 15 7. God calls me ambassador of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 20. God calls me healed. Psalms 30 and 2. God calls me surrounded by God's mercy. Psalms 32 and 10. God calls me well planted. Psalm 1 and 3. God calls me beautiful. Psalms of Solomon 4 and 7. God calls me not alone. Isaiah 41 and 10. God calls me his tabernacle. Revelations 21 and 3. Mm -hmm. God calls me sufficient. 2 Corinthians 3 and 5. God calls me strong. 2 Corinthians 12 and 10. God calls me blessed. Mm -hmm. Psalms 84 and 4. God calls me special. 1 Peter 2 9. God calls me joyful. Romans 15 13. God calls me alive. Ephesians 4 2 and 5. God calls me precious, Isaiah 40 and 4. God calls me a citizen of heaven, Philippians 3 and 20. God calls me wonderfully made, Psalm 139 and 14. God calls me hopeful, Jeremiah 29 and 11. God calls me his, Isaiah 43 and 1. God calls me wise in God, Proverbs <coughs> 2 and 6. And I can send these out to you, amen? amen. And this is just a portion of what God calls us. The world is going to call you anything but a child of God. Mm -hmm. So we got to know what God calls us. Whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to believe what they call you? Or are you going to walk in what God calls you? Amen? Amen.
Ready to the Lord and have a praise.